Hello everyone, and welcome to Biopedia. Let's discuss the Central Indo-Pacific, CIP for short. This is an area which roughly approximates with the ocean between North Central Australia and South Indonesia. Specifically for our purposes, it is an area of noticeably high marine biodiversity. Researchers back in 2018 found that the CIP has experienced relatively old colonisation events, ranging from 5.3 to 34 million years ago. Older colonisations mean that the species there have had time to diversify during the remaining time interval, which could account for the high diversity of the region today. But this got me wondering, why 34 million years ago? If you google the Eocene Epoch, you will notice that it lasted from 56 to 33.9 million years ago, which seems to overlap remarkably well with the first waves of colonisation in the CIP. So, could some event at the end of the Eocene Epoch have caused this increase in diversity, whether directly or indirectly? Now, the Eocene was a period marked by warmer temperatures than today, which began to cool at the end of the period. For example, it is during the late Eocene that the ice sheets formed in Antarctica. At the boundary between the Eocene and the later Oligocene, about 33.7 million years ago or thereabouts, average winter temperatures dropped by about 4 degrees Celsius, which was the cause of significantly higher rates of extinction among marine life at the time. During the warmer period of the Eocene itself, there was, in fact, a marine hotspot in the Tethys Sea, rather than the CIP. This name, Tethys, might not sound too familiar, and that's because it no longer exists. At the time of the Eocene, it was the sea that separated Eurasia from Africa. A 2008 review book paper by Renema et al. showed that over time, the location of diverse areas in the oceans can be seen heading east from the Tethys, where it was during the late Middle Eocene 42 to 39 million years ago, and moving to the CIP, where it is today. So, clearly, there was a reason for this movement. But why did it happen? It seems to me that there is a causal chain connecting all of this. As the Tethys Sea cooled during the Eocene-Oligocene transition, it may have fallen outside the thermal tolerance range of many species that had once lived in the area. Over time, many species relocated away from the Tethys, eventually ending up in the CIP. Over time, species diversified, and it's the sheer age of these colonisation events which has allowed the CIP to be so unusually diverse today. It's worth my pointing out the CIP is not the only hotspot, and the research literature focuses on other movements as well, but I'm going to stick with what people say about this specific transition. It's also worth my pointing out that I initially thought that the temperature-connected movement of corals, which could act to shelter or foster biodiversity, might have prompted this increased diversity in the CIP. This thought process was based on the same sources that I've used for this episode. However, seeing as I'm not sure about this yet, and I would need to find more sources and do a bit more research, I'm going to leave that as a potential story for another time. I don't know if corals would have been a cause or a consequence of the marine biodiversity shift, so as I said, I'm going to have to research this a bit more. For now, I thought it best just to focus on the general shift that the literature has talked about. Until next time, thank you all very much for listening. Feel free to get in touch with the show at biopediapodcast at gmail.com for any questions, comments or future topic suggestions. Until then, have a great week everyone.